A man who ask is a fool for 5 minutes. A man who never ask is a fool for life. SRV6 is a next generation IP bearer protocol that simplifies the complex traditional network protocols. In 5G and cloud era, it serves as a foundation for building intelligent paths. SRV6 combines the advantage of source routing mechanism used in segment routing with the simplicity and extensibility that IPv6 offer and in addition SRV6 provide multi-dimensional programming space and compiles with software defined networking paradigms making it a powerful tool for implementing in intent driven networks hello friends my name is sabi and in today's video we'll discuss about segment routing over IPv6 segment routing currently involves two data planes MPLS and IPv6 when SR is applied to the MPLS data plane, it is called as segment routing MPLS, which is SR MPLS. Whereas in case of SR v6, the SID is encoded in IPv6 address. So when we talk about SR MPLS control plane, it is IPv4 or IPv6. The protocol used is IGP or BGP. The data plane is MPLS. Whereas in case of SR v6, the control plane is IPv6. The IGP and BGP been used in that with the data plane as IPv6. The segment routing architecture can be directly applied to the MPLS data plane with no change on the forwarding plane. It requires minor extension to the existing link state routing protocols and the segment routing can apply it to IPv6 with a new type of routing extension header defined in RFC 8402. So why segment routing over IPv6 or why SRV6? So when we talk about Segment routing over MPLS, it is a network technology known for its stability, which offers effective path programmability within the network. The path programmability refers to the capability to define and control the specific routes that traffic take over through the network. SR MPLS achieved this by using MPLS labels to steer traffic along with the predetermined path, offering flexibility and control in network routing. However, the SR MPLS it may not be most suitable choice for certain services or applications that requires the transport of metadata. When we talk about service function chaining, service function chaining is a network architecture that involves chaining multiple network services or functions together in specific order to process the network traffic. These services could include firewalls, load balancer, DPIs, and more. So the service function chaining relies on the metadata to determine the sequence and the parameters of these services for each packet or flow. So the SR MPLS primarily designed for path control. So may not have built in mechanism for efficiently carrying and processing the met this metadata. It's not making it suitable for a service function chaining. Consider a 5G network that needs to apply various services to traffic flows originating from mobile device. The SR v6 SID associated with each flow determine the sequence of service that it should pass through. For example, the traffic with SR v6 SID for firewall plus quality of service shaping is directed to the firewall for security inspection and then cost shapers to apply the cost policy. The traffic with an SR v6 for a traffic optimization bypasses the firewall and cost shaper in this case and is sent directly to the optimization service. So the traffic for SRV6 SID for lawful intercept, which is for the DPI, may pass through the specific lawful intercept services and then it reaches to the destination. So by using SRV6 based service function chaining, the 5G network can efficiently apply services to the mobile traffic flow based on their specific requirement. So SRV6 SID act as a dynamic instruction for the traffic routing, allowing for flexibility and adaptability in service chaining. And this approach enables the network to provide security, quality of service, optimization, and lawful intercept services, which is tailored to the needs of different traffic flows within the 5G. Another difference between SRV6 and SR MPLS is that a node does not pop segments in the SRV6 SRH after processing them. 
this is mainly due to following reasons like initial design of IPv6 routing header was not closely related to MPLS, causing the unavailability of the POP options at the time. In contrast to MPLS labels that are independently placed on top of the packets and can therefore directly remove, so SRV6 segments are placed in the SRH segment routing header following the IPv6 header and associated with other extension headers such as a security encryption and verification information. Consequently, SRV6 segments cannot be popped. So the, because the pop operation is not performed, the SRV6 header retains path information that can be used for path backtracking. In addition, some innovative designs attempt to achieve new functions extension by reusing the segment retained in the SRH. So when we talk about data center network, in the data center can easily support IPv6 carrier networks and can be deployed in data centers. This results when we talk about data center interconnect scenario, the IP backbone network uses MPLS or the SR MPLS, whereas in DCN it uses in VXLAN. So in this case, the gateway needs to deploy to implement mapping between VXLAN and MPLS. In turn, this complicates service deployment without yielding any noticeable benefit. We need to have eVPN VXLAN stitching with eVPN MPLS in the core and then the other data center will have eVPN VXLAN again stitching. Because SRV6 has a native IPv6 attribute, both SRV6 and common IPv6 packets have the same packet header. SRV6 can implement communication between networks by leveraging only IPv6 reachability. This allows SRV6 to break the boundaries between carrier network and the DCN, whereas it can deploy it in the data center interconnect. So the basic IPv6 header ensure the communication between IPv6 nodes and multiple IPv6 extension headers provide various functions. So the SRV6 unlocks the value of IPv6 extensibility and helps build simplified end-to-end -end programmable networks, thereby implementing unified service forwarding and connectivity of everything through one network. In case of DCN, it can easily support IPv6. With SRV6 technology, carrier networks can deploy in data centers and even extend it to user terminal as well. So with the data center, it will be easy to support IPv6. With SRV6 technology, carrier networks can deploy it in data centers, even extend it to the user terminals as well. But in case of SR MPLS, it is difficult for DCN including the virtual machines to support MPLS. With IPv6 reachability, SRV6 can easily deploy across autonomous systems. Host routes do not need to be flooded across autonomous system and only aggregate route needs to be imported. This greatly reduces the number of routes and simplifies routing policies. Whereas in case of MPLS, one only SR MPLS T can used across autonomous systems and need an inter ace controller for that. The local PE requires the loopback host to remote PE. All the loopback host routes of remote PE need to be leaked in, the, in this case. SRV6 can reduce the number of existing network protocols and simplify network programmability, thereby better coping with the challenges of network deployments in the 5G and cloud era. In addition, the core advantages of SRV6 are its native IPv6 attributes and network programming capabilities. So the leveraging the native IPv4 attributes, SRV6 can better promote cloud network convergence, achieve compatibility with existing networks and improve inter ace experience. Why SRV6 is a native IPv6 technology? Why we call that? So SRV6 is a inseparable from IPv6 header. So the IPv6 Packet format is designed to simplify the IPv6 basic header. Typically, a device only needs to process the basic header in order to provide the IP connectivity. So the IPv6 header does not carry field such as fragment offset, header checksums, and options, unlike IPv4. This makes IPv6 header simpler and more efficient. And in addition, IPv6 utilizes extension headers to support various options without requiring modification of the existing packet format. 
So the IPv6 extension headers placed between the IPv6 basic header and the upper layer PDU. So the IPv6 can carry one or more extension headers or none at all. The source node of a packet adds one or more extension headers to the packet only when the other nodes are required to perform specific tasks. So the next header which indicate what kind of extension headers are used. If multiple extension headers are used, the next header field is used to indicate the type of next header that follows. The next header field in IPv6 basic header indicates the type of second extension header indicates the type of second header and in the last header the next header field indicates the upper layer protocol type so ipv6 extension headers are corresponding the protocol numbers a uh, routing device determines whether to process an extension header based on the protocol numbers specified by the next header type in in the basic header so hop by hop is an option the number is zero for this destination option header is 60 we will have the routing header as 43 we will have fragment header as 44 we will have authentication header as 51 we will have esp as 50 we will have upper layer headers with 58 as icmp v6 tcp6 and udp17 it is similar to a protocol number in ipv4 so protocol number in IPv4 states that what is the packet encapsulated in IP. Similarly, in case of next header, what extension header is been there with the IPv6 basic header. SRv6 is implemented through a routing header extension without the need of change in the encapsulation structure of original IPv6 packet. So SRv6 use IPv6 next header field equals to 43 or routing so the ipv6 routing extension header used as a generic header format defined in rfc 2460 the next header field can be ipv4 tcp or udp any ipv6 device can skip the header extension length header field if the segment length of the field is zero the router can ignore the extension header the srv6 srh is documented in RFC 8754 name IPv6 segment routing header SRH. The segment routing header is an extension header for IPv6 basic header followed by the extension as segment routing header and the payload. So in case of segment routing header SRH, the next header field indicates what type of header immediately following the SRH. Header length will specify the length of SRH. The segment length specify the number of route segment remaining last entry field contains the zero based on the index of the last element of the segment list the flag will contains eight bit flags tag will field tags a packet of a class or a group of packet like packets sharing the same set of priorities so the key information in ipv6 srh the routing type if the value of the field is four the packet header is a srh segment list is the list segment list zero segment list one segment list two this field represent the network path information segment list left is sl this field is a pointer that indicates the currently active segments that we have so this is all about the basics of srv6 in part one so we discuss about why we need srv6 over srmpls and what is the packet structure what is the segment routing header what is the extension header why srv6 is called as a native ipv6 attribute so thank you for watching this video in our next video we'll see that how the segment routing header processing work what is the sid structure and what is the common srv6 picture.